I am really shaken by how powerful Jesse Ventura's global warming special was on True TV, top ratings, it's the top show they've got on the channel, that they start out with an open mind and conclude by the end that it's a global government fraud. They get uh, Ben Santer to admit that he altered UN documents. See, Climate Gate is only the latest in what Lord Moncton and others for over a decade have been exposing, systematic fraud. Uh, and I just can't believe they allowed this to air. I was talking to uh, Michael Braverman, uh, who is the producer of the show, Jesse Ventura's manager last night. He called me, and he said, I can't believe they're allowing us to air this. I can't believe that they let us come out with the 9-11 information, with the HARP information, now this. Uh, but it shows that the there's a major power struggle going on right now and a lot of people in the establishment don't want to go into this world dictatorship so major shakeups happening uh right now but i am stunned that this aired lord christopher monkton is a big part uh of the uh hour-long special he hasn't seen it yet uh but he joins us for the rest of the hour from copenhagen denmark now uh into week number two Obama and others to speak tomorrow, the big grand finale. Uh, it ends early next week. Uh, and so joining us from Copenhagen to give us a report on uh, the state of this global government establishment declaration of tyranny. Uh, it looks like it's in trouble, but he's the real expert and is on the ground and can tell us that. And what their strategy, what their plan B is going to be, I have a good idea, but I want to get it directly from Christopher Moncton. Uh, sir, thank you so much for joining us. Well, Alex, it's a real pleasure to be with you again. Thank you. Uh, you're there. Uh, give us your report on what you've witnessed in the last week and a half and uh, the state of uh, this uh, event. Well, the first thing is it's been very like a Nuremberg rally. The people who come to these things are very nearly all of one mind only. As a very senior senator from Australia said to me today, this morning, as we were trying to get into the conference, and neither he, a senator from the Australia, nor, nor I, uh, you know, a member of the House of Lords in Britain, albeit without a seat or a vote, neither of us could get into the conference today uh, because they were excluding everybody except the delegates and a tiny, tiny token handful of outside observers. And we whom they had on, on their blacklist because we disagreed with what they tried to do there, were not allowed in. Um, but what has been going on over the last 10 days is they've been trying to see whether they can get a binding treaty. And more or less at the outset, they realized they would have to abandon that because it would never pass the U.S. Senate. If they call it a treaty, it requires two-thirds of the U.S. Senate to vote for it, and there are just too many blue-dog Democrats as well as sensible Republicans who will not vote for the destruction of the U.S. Constitution, for the establishment of a world government, for the bankrupting of the United States, for the destruction of working people's jobs right across the industries of the U.S., all of which will become unprofitable if anything like the original draft treaty had, had gone through. The word government has now been dropped from the treaty. Unfortunately, all of the principles of all of the, uh, the structures, the democratic structures, I say undemocratic structures, I should say, of uh, bureaucracy that they're going to put in place, these 700 separate new bureaucracies, all interlocking with the Secretariat of the Conference of the States Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. These are the new entities that they're going to bring into being to create this world government. Those are still in the draft, and Ban Ki-moon is clearly expecting, he's the head of the UN, he's clearly expecting that part of the treaty to go through because he is saying we're going to have to set up a structure of global governance just to handle, get this, this is actually what he admitted yesterday, the enormous amounts of money which we are going to be getting from the countries of the West once this agreement goes through at Copenhagen. So they are expecting to get this through. So all the reports you see about how the parties are fatally deadlocked, China has walked out, the African countries have walked out, everybody's complaining at the Danish government's handling of it, the Danish government says that he can no longer broker an agreement. All of these things are the traditional window dressing to try to disarm those of us who don't want any of this to succeed.
team because we would rather like to preserve. So they're playing the dead. They're playing prosperity. possum. They're, they're they're acting like they've been uh, defeated. But 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 you're giving us the dreadful news. Uh, Lord Christopher Monckton is that uh, you believe they will sign this agreement that really is a treaty, but on the surface isn't, and then it, it will be enforced through the bureaucracy. I mean, that's what Obama has promised. He has said to Congress last week, uh, quote, we will use command and control and circumvent the legislature, the parliamentary system, uh, setting up an EU-style dictatorship through the bureaucracy. If he tries to do that, he will be impeached. The great thing about the United States Constitution is that it does not allow the president to rule on his own. Uh, it's very clear that there are three branches of the legislature. There are the two houses of Congress and there is the executive branch, the, the president and his cabinet. And uh, he cannot rule on his own. If he tries, he will be impeached. In fact, already uh, there are those in the Republican camp who are beginning to look at the constitutional implications of some of the things the president has been saying, he had better tread very carefully indeed, or he will be out of office and in prison before he knows it. There are constitutional constraints which, thank God, may yet save not only America, but the rest of the world from what you rightly describe as a tyranny. That is what they had intended. And it was I who first revealed this when I got the first draft of this dreadful treaty and revealed its contents to the world uh, in a speech in Minnesota, which has now been seen by four million people on YouTube. And there's no doubt that this has woken people up to what is really intended here. And yes, Sir Maurice Strong, whom you mentioned in your introduction, he said 25 years ago that he was intending to turn the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change into a world government. And to that end, he didn't set it up as a scientific body, but as a political body. That was his original intention. And he has stuck to that throughout. You also mentioned Ben Santa, whose various fraudulent attempts to tamper with the uh, scientific reports of the UN, I have been exposing over the years. It was Santa who, on his own, rewrote the 1995 UN report on the climate which had been submitted by, you know, a thousand scientists. They'd agreed the text. The bureaucrats were furious that the scientists had said there is no indication of any human influence on global temperatures. They said it five times. They said it clearly. They said we don't know when such an effect will ever be discernible. Lord Moncton, for those that don't know, go back uh, in the Jesse Ventura special, but but, but for years you've been yeah. exposing uh, 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 Ben Santer. Tell people who he is at the UN, the direct deputy, the minion of Maurice Strong, people that don't know who Maurice Strong is. Uh, and uh, he's now in this TV show, Ben Santer, admitting that he did excise that out. So another huge climate gate. I mean, what is new to the public is new. This may be old news to people who've been researching it like you, but this is a whole other climate gate directly from the UN uh, uh, where they're engaged in fraud. That is exactly it. What, what we have clearly got here in this 1995 episode, which Sir John Horton, who was chairman of the UN at the time, uh, of the climate panel at the time, tried to deny had ever happened. He said he was unaware of any rewriting. He, in fact, knew perfectly well that this had been done because uh, he and others at the UN have later said, oh, but this was entirely within the UN procedures. One man could rewrite the UN's report and say exactly the opposite of what the scientists said, because that was what the bureaucrats wanted. They didn't want the scientists to say there wasn't a problem. Otherwise, this UN climate panel would be closed down and there'd be no world government. So they got, it to re they got Santa to rewrite it. And he's now admitted on television that that is what he did. I believe it's the first time he has admitted it. But I had the proof long ago that he'd done this. I've been saying so. In fact, I, I've done a tour of European Parliament in which I have revealed exactly which bits of the uh, 1995 report he did rewrite. Um, and so now it is much better known than it was that this had gone on. And, of course, he is one of the Climate Gate emailers. He's intimately connected with the people who fraudulently abolished the medieval warm period in the UN's next report after 1995, which was in 2001. They had to abolish that because while it was plainly warmer in the medieval warm period 
than today. They couldn't say there was anything exceptional about today's temperature. The 1990 UN report had shown a graph showing that the medieval warm period was one or two degrees Celsius warmer than today. That's three or four Fahrenheit. And they, by 2001, they'd swept that away. It's the same team connected to Ben Santa by these emails at Climate Case who had done that. And then in the 2007 report, they produced a bogus graph pretending that the rate of increase in temperatures over the past 150 years has itself been accelerating ever more rapidly as you come closer to the present. Now, that graph was bogus, and it was, in fact, fraudulent. And, and I saw Rajendra Pachari, the chairman of the IPCC, at a lecture at the University of Copenhagen two nights ago, using that bogus graph, which he knew was bogus. 